Hey! The younger is here! Kind people gather round and listen. I'm the younger. I leap and I pirouette and I make you laugh. I make fun of those in power and I show you how puffed up and conceited are the big shots who go around making wars in which we all are the ones who get slaughtered. I reveal them for what they are. <laughs> I pull out the plug and they deflate. Gather round, for now is the time and place that I begin to clown and teach you. I tumble, I sing, I joke. Look how my tongue words, almost like a knife. Remember that? But uh, I have not always been... Uh, well, I'd like to tell you how this came about. I was not born a uh, youngler. I didn't suddenly turn up and say, Hello, hi, with a sudden gust from the skies. Hoopla, good day, good day, good day. No, I'm the result of a miracle. A, a miracle <laughs> which was carried on upon me. Don't you believe me? This is how it came about. I was born a peasant. A peasant, yeah, a real countryman. I was... I was happy, I was sad. I had no land. No. I worked as all of us worked in these valleys, wherever I could get a job, wherever I could. And one day I came to a mountain, a mountain all of rock. It, it was nobody's. I found that out. I asked people, no, no, eh? <laughs> nobody wants that mountain. Well. I walked up to the peak and I scratched with my nails and I, I saw that there was a little bit of earth and I saw that there was a little trickle of water coming down. So I began to scratch further. I went down to the river bank and I wore my fingers to the bone bringing earth up unto this mountain. And my children and my wife were there. Oh, my wife. Oh, she's sweet. Sweet and fair. With two round breasts. And a gentle way of walking that reminds me of Hafer as she moves. Oh, she's beautiful. I love her. And it gives me pleasure to speak about her. Anyway, I carried earth up with my own hands, and the grass, it grows so fast, it grows on its own accord. You have no idea how beautiful it was. It was like uh, gold dust. <laughs> I would stick in my hoe and poof, a tree sprang forth. The earth was a miracle, a marvel. There were uh, poplars, uh, uh, poplars and oaks and other trees everywhere. I saw them when the moon was right. I knew when it had to be done. And there sweet, fine, handsome crops grew. There were chicory, thistles, beans, turnips. There were everything for me and for us. Oh, oh, we were so happy. We used to dance. And then it would rain for days on end, and the sun would blaze, and I would come and go, and the moon was always right, and there was never too much wind or too much mist. It was beautiful. Oh, it was so beautiful. It was our land. This set of terrace was really beautiful. Every day I built another one, another terrace. <laughs> it was like the Tower of Babel. Beautiful with all these terraces. It was paradise, paradise on earth. <laughs> well, and all the peasants, they used to pass by and saying, ah, look at that, that, that is amazing. Uh, look what you managed to brought forth on this pile of rocks. Oh, how stupid I was that I never thought of that. And they were envious. Well, <laughs> one day the Lord of the whole valley came and passed by. He took a good look at it and said, 
<coughs> Where did this tower spring up from? Uh, who is this land? It's mine, I said. I made it myself with these hands. It was nobody's. Nobody's? Ha! Ah, that nobody says that is a word that doesn't exist. It's mine. No! No, no, it's not yours, sir. And I, I even been to the lawyer, and he told me it was nobody's. I asked the priest, and he said it, but it was nobody's. And I built it up piece by piece. <coughs> it's mine, I tell you, and you have to give it to me. I mean, I can't, I can't do it. I can't give it to you, sir. I cannot go and work for others again. I pay you for it. I give you money. Tell me how much you want. No. No, I don't want money, sir, because if you give me money, then I will not be able to buy other land with the money that you give me, and I, I have to go to work for others again. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't want to. I don't. Give it to me. No! Then he laughed and went away. The next day, the priest came by, and he told me, Oh, the land belongs to the Lord of the Valley. Be sensible, my son, give it up, don't play the fool. Beware, beware, because he's a powerful evil lord. Uh, give up this land, in the name of God, be sensible. No, I told him, I won't. <laughs> and I made a rude gesture. And, the law and then he went away. And then the lawyer arrived also. He was sweating by heaven when he came up to the mountain to find me. Uh, and be, 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 be sensible. The, 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 there is laws, and you should you should know that you you, well, you, you can't. You, that you, no, and I made a rude gesture to him also, <laughs> and he went away. But the Lord didn't give up. No, he began by coming on hunting expeditions, and he sent all the hares chasing over my land. With his horses and his friends, he, he galloped to and fro across my land, breaking down my bridges, my hedges. Then one day, he set fire. He set fire to all my land. It was summer. He had a draught. He set fire to the whole of my mountain and burned everything down, even my animals and my house. But I wouldn't leave. I wouldn't leave. I waited, and that night it began to rain, and after the rain I began to clean up, put the fences post back into position, and replace the stones, and bring up fresh earth and water, everything. I was determined by heaven that I wouldn't move from there, and I didn't move. But one day he arrived along with all his soldiers, and he was laughing. We were in the fields, my children and my wife and I, we were working. He arrived. He got down from his horse. He undid his breeches. He came over to my wife. grabbed her, threw her to the ground, and ripped off her skirt, and I tried to move, but the soldiers held me fast, and he leaped upon her, and took her as, as she were a cow, and I and the children had to stand there, with our eyes bursting from our heads, watching. I moved forward with a leap. I managed to free myself. I took a hoe and I shouted, Your bastards! Stop! My wife cried. Don't do it. That's all they want. That's exactly what they are waiting for, don't you see? If you raise your stick, they kill you. Don't you understand? They want to kill you and take away your land. That's all they want. He's bound to defend himself. It's not worth taking your stand against him. You have no honor to defend. You're a poor, you're a peasant. 
country person. You cannot go thinking of honor and dignity. Honor and dignity, that's stuff for rich people, for lords and nobles. They are entitled to get angry if people rape their wives and daughters. But you're not. You're just a peasant. And I began to weep, weeping and looking all around. The children were weeping too. And the soldiers with the Lord of the Valley, they suddenly went off laughing, happy and satisfied. We wept. Oh, how we wept. We could not even look each other in the eye. And when we went to the, into the village, they began throwing rocks and stones at us. They shouted, Oh, you rocks! <laughs> you won't have the strength to defend your honor because you have no honor. You're an animal. The Lord has mounted your wife and you stood there without saying a word for a handful of earth. Oh, you're a wretch! When my wife went around the village, Whore! Cow! They shouted after her. And then they ran off. They, they would not even let her go into the church. Nobody let her. And the children couldn't go out in the village without everyone picking on them. And nobody, nobody would even look us in the eye. My wife ran off. I never saw her again. I don't know where she ended up. My children would look at me. They, well, they fell ill and wouldn't even cry. They died. I was left alone, alone with this land. So I didn't know what to do. One evening, I took a piece of rope and I threw it over a rafter. I put the nose around my neck and I said to myself, All right. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to end it all right now. I was just about to do it, just about to hang myself. When I felt a hand on my shoulder. I turned around and I I saw a fellow with very big eyes and a pale face. And he says to me, Could you give me something to drink? <laughs> well, I ask you in heaven's name, is that really the moment of coming asking somebody for something to drink when he's just about to, 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 to hang himself? I looked at him and uh, I saw he was he too had a face of a very poor wretch. Then I looked further and I I see that there are two more men and they too have faces full of very much suffering. <coughs> All right, I, I I give you something to drink and then I hang myself. So I I got them something to drink and I took a good look at them and Instead of something to drink, you, you people look as if you could do with something to eat. Well, it's been days and days since I last cooked anything to eat, but anyway, if you want, there is food. So I, I took a pan and put it on the fire to heat up some broad beans. Uh, I gave them some and one bowl apiece and, and how they ate! <laughs> well, I, I personally wasn't so hungry. I waited till they finished eating, I thought, and then I hanged myself. Anyway, while they were eating, the one with the biggest eyes, the one who looked like a real poor devil, he began to smile and he, and he said, That's a terrible story, that you're going to hang yourself. I know why you want to do it. <laughs> You have lost everything, your wife, your children, and all you are left with is your land. Yes, I know how it is. But if I were you, I wouldn't do it. 
And then he carried on eating. Oh, we ate. Then, in the end, he laid aside the utensils and said, uh, Do you know who I am? Uh, no, uh, but I got some idea that you might be um, hmm, Jesus Christ. Well done! Good point! Yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right. Five points. Well, um, and this is uh, St. Peter's and over here is St. Mark. Oh, pleased to meet you. Yeah, okay. Um, well, what are you doing in these parts of the world? Um, well, my friend, you've given me something to eat. And now I am going to give you something to say something to say uh, what, what what did this something oh you poor fellow it's right that you have held on to your land it's right that you don't want bosses over you it's right that you do, that you have the strength not to give in it's right I like you man you're a good man a strong man but you're missing something which is also right and which you should have here and here. You shouldn't remain here stuck on this land. You should move around the country and when people throw stones at you, you should tell them and help them understand and deflate that great bladder of a landlord. You should deflate him with the sharpness of your tongue and drain him of all his poison and his thinking bile must crush these nobles, these priests, and all of those who surround them, notaries, lawyers, etc., etc., etc. Not only for your own good, for your own land, but also for those like yourself, who don't have land, who have nothing, and whose only right is the, is the right to suffer and have no dignity to boast of. Teach them Teach them how to survive with their brains, not just with their hands. Uh, well, don't you understand? I'm not able. I, I have a tongue which refuses to budge. I stumble over everyone. I, I have no education. I, my brain is weak and useless. I, how, how am I supposed to do these things you suggest? and go around speaking to other people. Don't worry. You will now see a miracle. He took my head in his hands and drew me to him. And then he said, I am Jesus Christ. I have come to give you the power of speech. And this tongue of yours will lash and it will slash like a sword, deflating inflated balloons all over the land. You will speak out against bosses. No, you will crush them so that others can understand and learn, so that others can laugh at them, <laughs> make fun of them, because it's only, it's only with laughter that the bosses will be destroyed. When you laugh at the rulers, the rollers go, the rollers goes from being a mountain to being a little molehill and then to nothingness. Here, I shall give you a kiss and that will enable you to speak. And then he kissed me. Right on the mouth. He kissed me for a long time. And suddenly <laughs> I felt my tongue dart about inside my head and my brain, my brain began to move and my legs began to move with a mind of their own and I, I went out into the streets, into the streets of the village and began to shout, Oh, gather round people, gather round here, the juggler is here. 
I go around to play a satire for you. I'm going to joust with the lord of the land, for he's a great balloon, and I'm going to burst him with the sharpness of my tongue, and I shall teach you everything, how things come and go, and how it's not God who speaks, who steals. It is those in power, those who steal, who get unpunished. It is those who make big books of laws. These are the ones. And we must speak out. We must speak out. These rulers must be crushed. These rulers must be crushed. <laughs>